Have you ever tried color grading a photo with the tone curve tab, but you just felt so confused that you just quit color grading altogether? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to color grade a photo with the tone curve tab and set up a process that you can follow every single time to get insane results. Let's go into Lightroom and get started. Okay, so I have this photo here and all that I've done is just prep it, getting all the lighting and everything dialed in in terms of that and the color within the color mixer tab, but I haven't done any color grading yet. So when we go into the tone curve tab here, you're gonna see that we have this original channel here. This is our lighting. This is that gray channel. You can see that I've got a nice soft S curve. And then I've got the red, green, and blue channel. Now, usually where I start off is gonna be within the blue channel because either my image is going warmer or it's going colder. So this is a great place to start. And this is where I always recommend people to start. So let's start breaking down the curve and how we can make this more strategic. So we have a point for our highlights, we're gonna set a point for our midtones, and we're gonna set a point for our shadows. Now, when you're thinking about the tone curve and using the tone curve, let's think about it in the terms of using the color wheels. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with the color wheels or have used them before, but let's just go to the color grading tab. So we have our global wheel, we have our highlight wheel, Midtone wheel and the shadow wheel. Now, I always find that the color wheels are usually gonna be much easier and user friendly, but in this video, obviously, we're talking about the tone curve. But when we're thinking about using the tone curve, we have a point here. Let's say this top point is our global, then this point right here, that's gonna be our highlight, which is like the highlight wheel. And then we have this midtone point, which is like our midtone wheel. Then we have our shadows, which is like our shadow wheel. And so, these are gonna be a great reference for you if you're trying to think about this logically, how is this going to affect my image and how is this curve gonna break down? I usually like to think about it in this way. Okay, so let's say that you wanna push a really aggressive grade right off the start, you know that you wanna go strong. Generally, how I like to go about that is by removing all my points and I'll do that by double clicking on each point. As I shift this down the side here, you can see that just as like the global wheel, we're getting this affecting the entire image. So when we move it down or up, this is pushing in more of that overall tone. So let's say that I wanna push this a little bit warmer just because we are in a warmer scene. And you can see here that we're getting more of this yellowy green tone up in the sky and in the clouds. And let's say that we want more of like that golden sunset glow. So let's go to the green channel and see, because I'm seeing more greens into these yellows, I'm basically going to think about this as I'm extracting the greens. So instead of pushing more greens into the green channel, we're gonna go opposite and look how that actually affects this part of my scene here. And even up into the clouds, we're getting more of that red tone because we're pushing in more magenta. So if there's a color in your photo that you see that's pushing in a little bit more of a certain tone, like whether it is some reds or whether it's some greens or some blues, what you can do is actually go to that specific channel and then where you're seeing that tone, whether it is in the highlights, midtones, shadows, or even the global for this instance, then what we're gonna do is push opposite of that tone. So that really helps to make the scene more of that golden glow. So we could bring that down more and you can see we're starting to get more pink in our image. So to balance that out, just to make it look more natural, let's go about here. Okay, so if we wanted to, we could start affecting more of the highlights, midtone, shadows. So I'm gonna set a point for each of those, just like we did before. And so I've got my highlight point here. Now let's just start pushing and see where it's affecting. Okay, so we're getting it kind of in the sky here. Now, like we said, we want more of those red tones. So we're gonna to go to our green channel, set a point for the highlights, midtone, shadows. Let's push these tones a little bit more toward that magenta there. But I am seeing a little bit of pink up in these clouds here. And I don't necessarily want that. And that's leaning more towards that red tone. So what I'm gonna do is go to the red channel, set a point for the highlights, midtone, shadows. Now let's see where this point is affecting. Now what we could do is we could go to this tab right here. If you're a little bit unsure of where that color is coming into your photo, whether it is the highlights, more the midtones or the shadows, you can actually select this point and you can see on our tone curve, depending on where I drag this, that's actually going to set a point on my line for where I can actually start to pull out that color. So if I set a point here, what I can do is I can actually set that point and pull down just by dragging the mouse down. 
and that's going to affect that point. But like you can see, this is a very aggressive curve here. This is not very smooth, and so we're going to get some banding, some color banding that's really not going to look that nice. So what we need to do is we need to keep this really soft curves because if we start going super aggressive with the curves and having them too close, what can happen is these colors start to separate, they look choppy, and it really doesn't look that good. So what we're gonna do is double click on that point, but we know that that color is actually coming into the highlights. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this highlight point, and we're gonna pull that down towards the blue. Now you can see that that is actually removing some of those pink tones giving us more of that color back. Okay, perfect. I just wanna interrupt the video quick to let you know that if you are looking to level up your color grades, I created an insane solution for you. It's called Color Grade Like a Pro. This has literally everything that you need to get started on your journey to leveling up your color grades, and it is all completely free. All you need to do to get started is go down to the description below and you can grab that there. All right, let's get back into the video. Now let's go back to the blue channel here. And so let's start manipulating the midtones. Okay, so we're getting some of those midtone colors up in the clouds here. It's gonna be more within like the, the distance between these bright highlights and then these deep shadows. We're gonna get somewhere in here. Now what can happen, like I said, is if we move this point up too far and we really start to crank that, what can happen is these tones start to separate. So we wanna make sure that this point is actually down further on the curve, like it's a really nice, soft, subtle curve. So what we're gonna do is pull this down here. Okay, now I want this more golden, so we're gonna go to this green channel, pull that down more towards the red. Amazing, that looks pretty cool. Okay, so now let's affect the shadows, and I usually like to go in this pattern of highlight, midtone, shadows. It just makes the process really easy, and I'm gonna go across each channel and figure out what colors I wanna push, and then I'll go back depending on how the colors are shaping up once I'm finished the entire curve. So let's go into the shadows here, and let's pull those more blue. So let's dip these up, a little bit more blue. Okay, now we're getting more of kind of that pinky purple tone. And let's say that I want those more of kind of that true blue. Let's go to the red channel because we want to remove some of those reds in those shadows. So we're going to push this tone in the shadows more blue. Okay. That's really cool. Okay, now let's go to the green channel. Let's push this up to the green. Now we could go super teal with that. Personally, I don't really want to. I want more of kind of like that deep blue. So I'm going to push in a little bit more magenta here. Okay, so now we've got this really cool contrast between these really deep, deep blues. And then we've got these like really nice highlighted clouds that are bringing in some of these red cotton candy tones and then even into like this orangey red sunset. So overall, this looks pretty cool. But I'm thinking that we might have a little bit too much green even still within like this section right here. So what I'm gonna do is pull these highlights a little bit more just so that this sky actually blends in overall just so that there's not like a bit of a difference and a shift within colors. I usually like to keep my colors very grouped so that there's no major separation between color to color. So now we have more of this sky matching within these golden tones up into this part of the sky, which is more of those golden tones. And now that complements really nicely with those deep blues and then that cotton candy sky, which is actually going to give us this complementary color scheme because we've got these tones which are kind of in here and then our sky is actually on this side of the color wheel right in these blues so we've got a complementary color palette where we have blue and orange so we've got that blue and orange color scheme now let's say that we want to keep those deep deep shadows like down in here more of a neutral black and i usually like to do that in my image just because it actually makes your photo look more natural and true to life. Because when you're actually in real life, there are still those deep true blacks. And I find like that actually helps to enhance the realism of a photo. So what I'll do is I will actually try and remove some of those blues that are coming into the shadows. So I'm gonna go to the blue channel here and I'm gonna set a point for the, those deepest, deepest blacks. And now I'm gonna remove opposite of those blues. 
Now we could go overboard. We don't want to go overboard. We don't want to push in a tone or a color that's unnatural. I feel like that helps to make these blacks more neutral black. So this is what like we had before. So I'm going to reset that. And now I'm going to pull down. That's what we got here. So these blacks are looking more neutral black. So now as I come out, I'm seeing even this gap in between these clouds here, this is still looking more red. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just remove some of these reds here. So I'm gonna pull the midtones down a little bit more. Okay, that helps the sky blend a little bit more. Okay, so now as an overall, I would say that this image is pretty cool. Like it's, it's very extreme. Some people might really hate it, some people might like it. It honestly just depends on your style, but this is a really great method and a great way to think about the tone curve tab. Set it up as though it is the global highlight midtones and shadow wheel. And then as you're pushing your colors, make sure that the line isn't choppy. Make sure that the points aren't too close because you can start creating separation and banding in the colors, which then makes your photo look more amateur. So this is a great way to think about it. Start with your blue channel. You can either push warm or cold and then go to the green channel, remove some of those tones that are being pushed in that you don't like and then you can top it off with the red channel. All right, so if you liked this video and found it helpful, let me know what resonated with you in the comments below. And if you wanna to continue to level up your color grading, I think that you'll really like this video. I'll see you over there, peace.